Shem Beckler, right? That's a tongue twister. Um, mm -hmm. You know, think about it. As a scout, he was a scout for 10 years for Washington. He worked for the Las Vegas Raiders. But, but what better program can you think of that he could be a, re a recruiting person for than the, the University of Michigan, right? And so he joins as assistant director of football recruiting. And I just, I, I feel like to your point about um, this, this recruiting focus now the, the last year or two, um, what do you think the impetus of, of this was other than the obvious, of course, the bow connection? Well, just trying to grow the, that department in a smart way, I think is probably the big thing. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, part of doing that is bringing in people that understand the program and understand that Michigan is not, it, it's not Florida state. It's not, you know, uh, Auburn. It's, it's got deeper roots than pretty much any school in the country outside of Ohio state really. And it, but it also beyond that has the academic component. So you need to be able to, to be able to a find guys that can do both that can do the academics and the athletics, uh, but also uh, being able to, uh, to, like I said before, sell it and someone who knows everything that Michigan offers that, that Ann Arbor offers, because some guys just aren't going, it's not going to resonate with them, right? It's, it's not. And some guys, it will resonate with them, maybe not initially, but more so when they understand what Michigan can do for them. That's, that's where Jim Harbaugh's transformational, not transactional uh, mantra seems to kind of come in. And we've heard them basically deploy that over the years. I remember having a conversation with Giles Jackson when he was a recruit. And when asked why, you know, why Michigan after he chose Michigan, he's like, because I'm looking 30 years down the road, not three years down the road. Now, granted, he left the program after two years, but uh, nonetheless, the fact that you can that you can sell that because that's not where society is in a lot of ways. That's certainly with NIL, the instant gratification that can come with things. Uh, they need someone that can then come in and say, look at what this program can do for you. And in order to do that, you also need guys who have had the program do that for them. And while Shemi wasn't a, you know, he wasn't out there playing linebacker in a winged helmet or anything like that, or if, if he was, I didn't know about it. Um, he, he certainly knows everything that there is to know about the university of Michigan, particularly the football program. And also he knows what it takes in the NFL. So that's another added element of that transformation uh, aspect rather than just the transaction, because he can, he can sit there and say, listen, I can see in you the things that are necessary to be that NFL guy. Now you come here, we're going to make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row. And then you can point to Jim Harbaugh's success. They put uh, someone from every single position in his tenure so far into the NFL draft. Uh, every single position that's pretty, I mean, even long snapper, that's, what's really impressive. And you, you mix all these elements together. It really is kind of a holistic approach. And Shemi is just another uh, factor that helps them continue that holistic approach towards uh, the ability to, to recruit at a high level. This program's obviously done a masterful job in the transfer portal, the last few cycles. And, uh, we're at a point in the transfer portal where there is still plenty of volume out there. I don't know that there's a whole lot of quality uh, players out there, but there are some. Uh, and and uh, of course, Michigan is solid everywhere, if not um, first rate uh, positional units across the board on both sides of the ball. But wide receiver could use some help. Zachary Franklin's a guy out of Texas, San Antonio, who's caught 85, 90 balls the last two years. Is there any thought about maybe not even him in particular, but, you know, that there will be another push for a player or two in the transfer portal? I do think that they're looking a little bit at a couple positions. And it really is those uh, the pass catchers and those keeping the, the pass catchers from being able to do much of anything. Right. They they were targeting probably more so some cornerbacks in the in the earlier cycle and uh, Central Cyp Cypress and Tony Grimes. And they they struck out on those guys. Uh, then, then you had the Ole Miss uh, kid who it seemed like it, it was probably a lock for him to come to Michigan, follow Chris Partridge, and 
he ended up going to Ohio State. So they're certainly looking at some positions. But what what's even more interesting is you know Taiwan Malone, another guy who ended up at Ohio State via Ole Miss. Michigan was trying to get into it with him. They don't really need defensive tackles, right? That they are recognizing. It's kind of like the offensive line uh, bringing in uh, Drake Nugent made sense. Bringing in Miles Hinton uh, only made sense from a name perspective. You know, his brother played defensive tackle for Michigan, and and they certainly recruited uh, Miles really heavily. But uh, it's uh, they they are looking both positionally as well as just from a talent perspective. They recognize that uh, we have opportunities to be able to bring guys here, and it doesn't really matter if it's at a position of need. If it creates more competition, that's best for us. You know, that's been Jim Harbaugh's mentality since he arrived. Uh, but I, I would expect that they're going to continue to look at wide receiver. I think that they like what they have at wide receiver. Certainly, it could use a little bolstering. Um, I think losing A.J. Henning wasn't something – I mean, I could have told you that they probably were going to lose <laughs> A.J. Henning given the lack of usage last year. Uh, right. But uh, the way they talked about him, Sharon Moore uh, last week was on a what was very clearly a pre-recorded – uh, conversation with John Jansen on the In the Tre- uh, Trenches podcast, and he, he spoke very briefly about uh, everything that Henning brought to the table. Yes. And that's, was, you know, he, he was already <laughs> gone. He was long departed at that point. But, Somebody uh, in the editing room is going to gonna get a talking to. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's the, the, the level of, uh, you know what, we'll just let that stand. People will understand. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I think that they, they like all those pieces they have. I know they're excited about guys like Carmelo English coming in. Uh, and they like what they have in Frederick Moore and Samaj Morgan. But at the same time, how on, honestly, how much can you expect a freshman to step in at wide receiver? It happens across college football. It's pretty rare, though. Usually it's year two, year three. I, I likened it, uh, I, I believe it was on Monday's episode of Lockdown Wolverines, uh, to uh, – uh, or it might have been on the uh, on three podcast that was on there as well. Uh, Nico Collins didn't really, you know, he he was a non factor, non starter in year one, and then year two suddenly Nico starts bursting onto the scene, uh, best receiver for them, you know, a couple years later. Uh, but uh, you usually can't count on a freshman to to come in at the receiver position and suddenly light things up. Uh, so with that in mind, n- I wouldn't be surprised if they brought in somebody. I don't know uh, who they necessarily will. I know they tried to throw their hat into the Keon Coleman sweepstakes before he committed to uh, Florida State about an hour ago. Uh, but uh, it's uh, they're certainly looking. I do think that they like Cornelius and Roman Wilson. It, the problem with liking what you have is we've seen in the last couple of years what injuries can do. Roman Wilson's been injured in week five each of the last two years. Ronnie Bell goes down in week one two years ago. Uh, You don't want to sit there and say, we like what we have, but then just be a freak play away from not having everything you like. You know what I mean? So I'm sure that they're going to continue there and continue on looking at corners. Again, they they like what they have at corner, but they don't have an absolute sure thing opposite Will Johnson at the moment. They think Amari and Walker can get there. The, th- the good thing for them on uh, really both sides of the ball is the schedule. They don't really run into anyone on the schedule this year until mid to late in the season that is going to give them any problems. They can afford some growing pains. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, you, you don't want to have to go through that. You want to be able to, to come out and fire on all cylinders, be ready to go, so that when you get to the, the Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State, uh, trifecta and at the end of the season uh, you're not still trying to figure out what you know how you can fill up some deficiencies especially if there's injuries um so I guess the one thing I'm wondering we're we're about four months or less even away from actually seeing some of this on screen on Saturdays and is there some merit to showing more of the past game? than Michigan did in 2022 if the goal is to bring in higher caliber wide receiver talent 